How do you fix one of the worst superhero movies of all time? It can't be done. It can't. It's impossible. Well, to quote Arnie, chill out. Let's see if we can fix Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin turned out even colder than the ice in Mr. Freeze's gun. This movie is one of the biggest failures in the history of movie making. It was goofy, nonsensical, rushed, silly, and seemed bereft of self-respect. It's like they had finally given up and just were like, screw it, it's Batman, no one cares about this. Let's just try and sell some toys, make everything toyetic. Simply put, this movie was a load of old battles. Is it possible to improve Batman and Robin keeping the same cast and the same director, but just changing up a bit, really? Let's have a bit of fun and see what we could do to improve possibly the worst Batman movie ever made. Now, don't hate me, but I actually genuinely think George Clooney was a great choice for Batman. Granted, the performance was terrible, but let me reiterate the key word, choice. He was a great choice for Batman. I admit, in the performance, he was pissing around. I freeze. I'm Batman. I honestly think Clooney could have been a father figure version of Batman with a sense of authority, but also a warmness. Which was kind of what they went for in the movie, but it just wasn't written well. I would give Clooney some meaningful speeches about morality and justice and anger and all that important stuff. Make him a wise, middle-aged Batman. Look, we'd seen the angry Batman, we'd seen the torture of Batman, and we see it too much these days too. But not since Adam West had we seen the father figure Batman, and I honestly feel like he could have pulled it off. I don't think it was Clooney being less aggressive that put fans off, it was just the fact that he didn't even make an effort to disguise his voice and was just cracking jokes the whole time. I would present Batman as a respected veteran who believes in good and is finally coming to terms with his parents' death, learning from it and not letting it define his whole life. I would include a sincere scene where he tells Alfred he is finally moving on and is able to look at being Batman more clearly. Now he wants to leave an example to Robin and the rest of Gotham. He doesn't want to inspire fear, he wants to inspire hope. Now don't get me wrong, I'd also include several scenes where Batman battles with his angry side, and I would probably include a minor villain such as Victor Zaz early on in the film, and who better than an insane killer to make Batman question himself. It would be similar to Batman's confrontation with Zaz in the Nightfall comic, where Zaz is mocking Batman, telling him he's the same as him, and Batman loses it and just has to be pulled off from beating the shit out of Zaz. I honestly feel like that would be an epic scene to include, especially for a Batman longing for change, for him to realise he is still on that edge. It would also be good for this film because it would show that yes, this is a less aggressive Batman, but it's not going to be a film that's sunshine and rainbows. I like the idea of Batman wanting to be better, but he has a monster asleep inside of him that can be awoken at any time. So here's something I would add that I really want to see. It was actually in talks that happened in the movie after this, which is going to be titled Batman Triumphant. It is bringing back, in a dream sequence, Jack motherfucking Nicholson as the Joker. Look, I know in these videos I'm supposed to use the same cast, but damn it, sometimes... If it makes sense, surely I could just add one actor to the mix, especially if it's just for a cameo. Don't tell me he wouldn't have said yes, this was 1997 and he was still going strong in Hollywood. Nicholson would have definitely come back for a cameo. I would have had a nightmare sequence in which Bruce Wayne, who is of course trying to move forward with his demons, dreams of none other than the Clown Prince of Crime. Now whatever you did with this sequence, I'd have been bloody happy. Whether they had them fight, or go back and forth, or the Joker just chastises him, or it was a surreal nightmare involving the Joker, whatever, this would be a foolproof scene. Impossible to dislike. Also don't think it would be crowbarring him in for the sake of it. The Joker is key to the themes I'd be discussing in the film. Although he's dead and gone, he is still a villain who can take Batman to that dark side. I must say, I was quite a big fan of Chris O'Donnell in Batman Forever. I actually liked the depiction of Robin in that film, as well as his costume. I think it turned out probably the best it could for a 90s version of Batman's sidekick. One thing I wouldn't have was him immediately turn up in the Nightwing costume. Like, what the hell? Just turns up on screen, he's just dressed as Nightwing. I would have kept the Robin costume from Batman Forever, I actually really like it. I also need to make sure Chris O'Donnell grew his hair out for Batman and Robin. I feel like his floppy hair in Scent of a Woman was way more appropriate for Robin than the buzz cut he had in Batman Forever. 
I also think the buzz cut did him no favours because it made him look older and people were already asking why Robin looked like he was in his bloody 20s. I think it was too early to have Batman and Robin falling out and the way they did it in Batman and Robin was just so rushed. In my version, I would simply have a few deep conversations and minor disagreements with Robin not understanding why Batman is so protective but eventually coming to the point where he understands. One thing I think would be great is having Robin go off on his own a couple of times in the film, having a few experiences which make him see why Batman is so protective over him. Perhaps we could have Robin rescue and protect a child who has run away, and Robin could explain to him why he needs his family, which would help Robin in turn experience the responsibility Batman feels, and that causes him to relate to Batman a bit more and understand why he's so protective. Kind of a coming of age story for Robin. Now if you're going to include Bane and make him into a complete donut with no place in the movie but Poison Ivy's dominatrix victim, why not have Robin come across him by himself in the movie when he is rescuing this child? Look, if he's not going to be the main villain, just have him be in a really cool series of scenes with Robin where the child has somehow got caught up in Bane's gang scheme and Bane is threatening him. It would only be a small subplot, but it would exist to give Robin a brief fight against Bane where he gets his ass kicked most of the time but still holds his own and manages to escape and rescue the child. The Bane story could be left open for the next movie and we could find out that Bane is slowly plotting to eventually let himself loose on Batman. Robin could mention Bane to Batman and they could have a tense discussion about the fact that there are underground criminals preparing to strike in Gotham. And Batman would basically say Mr. Freeze is the priority now, but if this villain is out there, they would face him together. Which would be a good way to create interest for a future movie, without having Bane embarrassed in Batman and Robin like he was in the actual film. I like Robin having a few experiences on his own, which give him this kind of sense of direction and confidence and adventures that Batman doesn't know about, but we as the audience do. It would help us relate to Robin more personally. And a big theme running throughout my version would be the importance of family, experiences, coming of age and responsibility. And this would all accumulate, of course, with a Bat family being formed by the end. If I could choose a tone and vibe for Batman and Robin, I'd go for something like the Batman cartoon. It wasn't especially dark and wasn't especially camp. It was a more laid back Batman cartoon that could still be exciting and thrilling when it needed to be. And I'd maybe include elements like Batman the Brave and the Bold or Batman the Animated Series. Just give it a sense of fun, but not a sense of camp. There is a difference. One of the other main problems of Batman and Robin wasn't the fact that there was humour, it was the fact that it was overloaded with humour. It was humour up the arse. Every single character that you saw on screen was cracking gags. If you're going to have gags, don't have them all the way through from every single character. Arnold's one-liners are his trademark. Cut the amount of them in half and just let him do them. One of the things he does best, and they would stand out more if he was the only one reading them off. Feeling hot. I find that unlikely. Now you may wonder how the movie could hold on to a fairly serious tone if Arnie is doing his lines, but if you think about it, Arnie does one-liners even in his most serious movies, such as The End of Days and even Terminator 2. You just have to keep them in check. We all know that Arnie's lines are actually awesome and give his movies that fun and memorable sparkle. Since we know these days that Arnold can actually act fairly well, given the material, I would like to see him put a serious spin on Mr. Freeze. For example, maybe we could see some flashbacks to his life with Nora, him reliving their love, his accident, his early days as Mr. Freeze. I feel like Arnold could do it. Let's actually go with the character of Mr. Freeze, like they explored in Batman Sub-Zero. The tragic character. Of course, this is Joel Schumacher, so the one-liners would still be there, but one-liners don't mean it is impossible to take anything seriously. I would also take the risk and give Arnie an emotional scene where it's just Freeze talking to his wife alone. I would give Arnold the chance to deliver and would really try and build the sympathy for Mr. Freeze. I remember some bad reactions to Batgirl even being included in the film, which I don't agree with. It's just the fact that they wrote it so badly. She was just this random long lost niece of Alfred who turned up out of bloody nowhere and Alfred went, fuck it, she's here now. Let's make her Batgirl. In this version, I would have had Batgirl actually be Commissioner Gordon's daughter, like she's, you know, supposed to be. And she would spend the movie trying to work out who Batman and Robin are, as well as trying to expose Pamela Risley. This would also be a great opportunity to see if Alicia Silverstone could actually deliver in this part, because she really didn't get a fair shake in the actual film. It would be cool to show her honing her skills, training herself in martial arts and as a detective, 
And for once in the Burton Schumacher series, I'd actually try and do something with Pat Hingle as Commissioner Gordon. We never got to see an actual character for Gordon, so here's two interesting characters we could focus on that would shift the movies closer to the comics and give the film more depth. It would be interesting to see Gordon have a deep talk with his daughter about how dangerous Gotham is. He could talk about all the villains he has seen from the Joker to the Riddler and the mental effect it has had on him. We can actually see Gordon on the streets too and actually speaking to Batman, which I think could work more because Clooney's Batman would be more welcoming. We could perhaps finally see the relationship between Batman and Gordon develop on screen. Another thing that would make this movie stand out. Because of course, Batman and Gordon never actually really got on in this timeline. Thanks for saving the day, Batman. I'm afraid the circus gang is back. We'll see. Batman, it looks like the circus gang is back. Fuck you. Pamela Risley would be mainly pursued by Barbara Gordon, because she's the only one who sees through her seductive ways and notices she is slowly wrapping men around her finger to get access to information that could lead to her murdering bloody humanity in favour of plants. I think I would have Barbara actually catch Pamela in the act and realise what she's doing but she'd end up getting her ass kicked by Ivy in one scene, building up to a fight later on in the movie where Barbara confronts her as Batgirl. I must say Uma Thurman's performance as Ivy in Batman Robin was disgraceful. It really was her reading off jokes. That was literally it. Oh, I get my diamonds. You and me love. Retrieve my wife. You never said anything about a wife. Come on. Uma Thurman's a great actress, so I would make Poison Ivy a lot more sinister in the film and perhaps have her try and seduce Batman and Robin one on one instead of in that earth shatteringly bad scene with the back credit card that still haunts our dreams. I would make Ivy a killer, very uncompromising in her desire to wipe out all humans in favour of plants, as she would go off on these insane flights of fantasy and sick statements about what she wants to do and talk about her bizarre plans for the world. I would take us visually into her mind and we would be transported into her new twisted world. Ivy is quite a bloody insane character if you read the comics, so it'd be great to witness on screen Ivy's dream reality. Let's go into her mind, a world taken over by herself and plant life, with her ruling over many unfortunate men she has kept alive, two being Batman and Robin, who we could show fanning her at her altar in possibly the most surreal and odd sequence in the movie. Keep in mind these sequences would not be camp, I would give them almost a burnt and visual edge and a very dark and bizarre feeling, as we would see not only how Ivy would live, but how plants have evolved into these monstrous, terrifying living beings in charge of the planet. Mr. Freeze would well and truly lose his shit later on in the movie, and I did like in the real Batman and Robin that Poison Ivy lied to him that Batman killed his wife in order to use him to help her. Things would get fairly serious and I would ask Arnie to bring some of that Terminator intensity as he declares war on Batman and Gotham. Instead of doing jokes back and forth with him, Ivy would be manipulating Freeze all the way through the movie, with disturbing mind games trying to unleash the anger inside of him. Batman and Freeze would have an actual fight at the end of the film which was missing in Batman and Robin and I would make it a fairly epic one with Freeze literally wanting to kill him and refusing to believe he didn't disconnect his wife. Meanwhile, Robin would be on a race against time to save Freeze's wife with help from Alfred back at the cave. Robin's radio would not be working so he could not tell Batman the situation something Alfred would be working on also. You may remember in the actual Batman and Robin, Batman proved to Freeze it was Ivy who disconnected his wife with the use of what can only be described as an early bloody iPhone. Yeah, that wouldn't happen here. Batman would not actually know she had been disconnected and Ivy would of course have told Freeze it was him. Only Robin would know and he was now trying to save her in a race against time while Freeze and Batman were going at it and possibly Freeze was gonna kill Batman. This could be a great fight with Batman of course stopping Freeze icing the city and then dodging his gun many times before it eventually becomes a fist fight of epic proportions. George Clooney and Arnold Schwarzenegger are going at it on screen. Enough said. Come on, who doesn't want to see that? Batman would be on the verge of getting choked to death by Freeze but Robin at the last second would get through on the Bat radio and would tell him that Nora is restored. Freeze would then back away and reflect on what he had done in a real tragic scene that his wife was still alive and that Ivy had lied to him and Batman and Robin weren't actually his enemies. Batman would tell him basically in the same way he did at the end of Batman and Robin, in a speech I did actually like, that they would have her move to Arkham and he would continue his research there. 
What about Poison Ivy and Batgirl? Well, as Robin raced against time to save Nora, Batgirl and Ivy would be having a fight too, which we would cut back and forth to also. This would be a lot more personal than the one they had in the real movie because Batgirl has been trying to expose Spammer all through the movie and Batgirl wants to prove herself as a hero. Ivy would be vicious and insane at this point and Uma Thurman would certainly grow more deranged throughout the fight and certainly would not shout curses as she was beaten. Curses! Wow, all that without a bat credit card and bat nipples? Who would have thought it? In summary, what can you really do with one of the worst superhero movies ever? Well, with some tweaks and changes and some actual care going into it, it could have been pretty good. My version would focus on themes of fatherhood, coming of age, nature versus humanity, Batman's inner demons and his approach to crime fighting, and of course, Mr. Freeze's love for his wife and his tragic character. There was loads to work with in Batman and Robin. I'm just baffled they just chose to go the route of just no route, no effort, just nothing. This version is a fun little fantasy for me to imagine. I'm not saying it would be amazing, but better than what we got? Well, that's surely a given. So what do you guys think about my improvements to Batman and Robin? And are there any other films you would like to see me do a video like this on? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe. And until next time, stay safe, everyone.